It's the Friendly Fire Show, episode 227, for the start-ish of February 2023. It's a short month, so it's pretty much you're here or you're not here. I don't know. I'm one of your co-hosts, Steve Wright. Joining me is my friend and yours, Ben Salter. Hi, Ben. You're in your own house. I'm back in mine. It was fun while it lasted. Yeah, you almost forgot how to do this because we had one episode where we were in person. We could actually just vibe it out as we went with basically no plan, and it went pretty well for our first ep for the year. I think it did. I think it was just f- more so just fun to see you and go for a random run at 7.30 in the morning because uh, we're like that now. We're not like planning mm-hmm. our pub visits. We're just heading to park runs. Well, not really. It's very out of character. That's something that in uh, history you would expect perhaps you to suggest and force on me and me to not want to do. But we flipped it because you're very much the fitness man of the two of us. Uh, but yeah, I forced you along and now you're going to make your 14 kilometer run in Sydney when you get there. So you can thank me when you make it. Well, all right, I will. And I think, I think the fact that you have, and we don't have to say when, but I think that you have a, a, a date for your wedding sort of in mind. So maybe you're thinking a little bit more of the fitnessy things because I guess you got to fit in that suit once, once the suit's ordered. Well, I'm not ordering that until the last minute for that exact reason. Who knows what size? <laughs> you can always get it tailored, I guess. Anyway. Uh, easier to take it in than to add some more, I would, I would assume. So, uh, yeah, we can wait. Very hey. true. I, I, I can technically fit in my wedding suit, and my wedding ring still fits on my finger, but let me tell you that both are getting quite snug, and we're uh, getting close to our 10-year anniversary, so... You draw your own conclusions as to what that means. Uh, yeah, no comment, no comment. That's a safe <laughs> way. Um, now, in the in the face of these many interest rate rises and the cost of living, I have made my last impulse purchase online. You know when uh, various social media ads say, definitely, you know, I think they definitely don't target me and I'm not affected at all. This one got me uh, because it seems like fun. Check this out. What is it? it it's a pump action shotgun. For bugs. It's called the Bug Assault. It was on the Hamish and Andy uh, podcast, which is why I got served ads for it, and I thought that's dumb. And then I got it. Very fun. You basically just put some salt in there and blast flies with it, and it kills them. So no need for bug spray, no poison in the house. Much funner. Uh, It's got a full-on like pump action. I'm not going to do it because it's extremely loud. Um, Does it shoot when you pump it? No. No, you got to you got to make a like... safety mechanism, and it kind of sucks the salt in, and you got to hit the safety trigger, and then it blasts out salt at quite some force. How uh, apparently m- much salt? Like, do you have to then go wipe up the salt after? I guess you're wiping up the bug, or like getting yeah, rid of the bug. I think like a quick little vacuum will sort that out. No dramas. All right. Keeping a tidy house. Uh, it's it's mainly for the fun of it. It's definitely aimed, I would say, at uh, men in their thirties. People who have some a small amount of disposable income who've been practicing in Call of Duty for years and finally have a target to take down because we can't get any like BB guns or anything in this country for good reason. Uh, this is the next best thing. Very childish. Not the type of thing you can be buying uh, when you have a wedding coming up. So at some time, this is my last one. No more impulse purchases, but it seems like fun to me. I re- highly recommend. Well, there you go. And you said bug assault. I just want to point out that in the show notes that I can read, it says bug hyphen a hyphen salt, S-A-L-T, which is kind of hilarious in its own right. Of course, uh, they're not sponsoring us. I, I remember when we used to try to get beer companies to sponsor us. Maybe we should just go for the bug assault. Otherwise, this yeah. is uh, this is free promo, you guys. You are welcome. It is free promo uh, because it's a product that we like and we would happily endorse well, I already have one now, but I'll take a second one because you can you can never be too careful. And I'm actually looking forward. To, I might even leave the fly screen open because I need a target to to practice. I did not go all out and buy the laser sight. I thought that was too much. I don't need a laser sight for my salt shotgun. I wish you were uh, joking, but I know that you're not, right? No, no, no that's, yeah. that's a real attachment. Look, it's it's clearly a toy, but a practical one. Right. Ish. Well, more more power to you. I'm the the shirt that I'm wearing. I I got from True Classic. More free promo, and I just have been assaulted with their like get our shirts. They fit really well because you're getting fatter, and like spoilers, they do. So I'll take it. 
Maybe they make wedding suits. Who knows? I'll let you know. Uh, we, we have a regular show to get back to. We, we kind of skipped it last week because we were in the same place and it was very exciting. And I, I basically also spoiled what's happening this week. Um, but going back a couple episodes, there was a holiday period, which we have enjoyed. Yeah. And, uh, we had, we had big talk, Ben, but did we actually do what we were thinking we were going to do? That's the if question. I recall, we pretty much said that we it was a different year for us because often we'd had kind of the holiday game in mind for some time. For you, for many years, it was Assassin's Creed. For me, it was the thing I normally had missed throughout the year. Uh, and this year, it kind of felt like we we're going back to some older stuff or some things that we didn't expect to play. Uh, so good to revisit, see if we did it. The number one thing on my list, I actually did. I finished Cyberpunk finally. So shortly after the show... Took me two years. My very my first achievement in that game is from like twenty the, when it first came out, and my last one. I'm just using this to know pretty much when I finished it. it was like the the twenty fourth of December or something. So finally, good game. Yeah, it's no Witcher three. It's really not. And conveniently, that's what I decided to play during my break. I think I said I was going to do that because the next gen update came out. Um, I found a surefire way to make sure I would, and that's um, purchasing for like thirty bucks. I think. Um, the Witcher 3 Game Complete? of the Year edition or Ultimate it, yeah. edition or something like that. Um, not a fact-based show. Um, but the good thing about it is you could link your game saves using a CDPR account. So I could play the game from scratch. And any of the achievements that I missed the first time around, not only could I earn them in this new version of the game, I could upload my save to the cloud, open up the old Witcher 3, download my cloud save and also get that achievement as well. So um, if you know me in any way, shape or form, you know that that is like right up my alley. So I, in both games, the Witcher three base plus the DLC and the Witcher, I think it's complete edition, but I'm not sure. Don't, it's not a fact based show. Uh, I, I'm only missing two achievements total in those two games. And that's to finish on, or maybe two, I don't know, whatever there's, there's one or a set of achievements coming from finishing the death March version difficulty which is the hardest and i'm like 65 percent of the way there on that one so i will eventually finish the witcher 3 in its entirety technically Again. twice yes well yes. three times i guess in that case <laughs> well so that's going back to 2015 i went then went back to 2011 following your advice finally and played dark souls number one remastered because it's way better than the 360 version it runs pretty consistently uh not quite finished but i I'm pretty far in, I think. So I don't think I have too much to go. Actually, I know that I don't because I got lost and I had to Google where to go next. And that, I wouldn't say it spoiled it for me. I knew that I was nearing the end, but it confirmed that there's not that much to go. Uh, yeah, you're definitely right. I tried to play Sekiro first because it was the most modern game next to Elden Ring that FromSoft has made. Way too hard to get into. Dark Souls much easier. Um, and yeah, it's it still holds up pretty well for a 2011 game. So definitely worth playing. The one I would definitely recommend if you liked Elden Ring. It's it's so similar. It's it's not as good, but it's it's much older. So it's it's kind of going back to the the start where we began. You can kind of see how they got to Elden Ring from this. Uh, and yeah, I would probably say it's a fair bit easier too. At least at least the early part. By the time you you hit some of the harder stuff, you know what you're doing a bit more than Elden Ring. Um, but it's not as accessible. Like if you, if you had no idea what this game is, you never play this type of thing. The first two minutes will just put you off. Um, oh, and yeah. there's a boss which you're not meant to fight straight away which is kind of telling you that but if you didn't know that was the thing and I think that's what put me off the very first time I played it just died instantly and like oh this sucks uh, this time I really liked it I think I'm Dark Souls, Souls generally out for a bit so I don't think I can go straight to another of their mini games there's still I guess Demon Souls the remake which came out I could play Dark Souls 3 a few options there uh, but maybe maybe that's next holiday like I'm in a break yeah, it's 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 a weird mixed bag because I think I did better because I tried Sekiro, Bloodborne, Dark Souls. I played Dark Souls all the way through. I tried two and I'm halfway through three. And like it's it's good, but I feel like you need to be in that mindset to do it. So mm. maybe it's it's worth going back in a year later, but you might have to like Gotta really bash your head yeah. against a wall for a little while. But that's okay. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that, as long as you're okay with doing it. And I guess always, uh, as always, you can just bounce off it and not care in the end. Yeah, that's it. Uh, my other holiday games, Pokemon I didn't get through. It's it's good. I really like it. Uh, it's just it's it performs so poorly that I 
I either play it for a couple of hours and get through a bit and I'm getting really into it or I play it for like a minute and it just runs so badly that I'm like, nah, I can't be bothered dealing with this. So you, if you do play it for a little while, you get used to it. Uh, it's slightly better than it was at launch. It's still, it's rough compared to any other game, Switch inclusive, but it sold over 20 million, million copies we just found out. So it doesn't seem to really matter that much. Um, and then one that wasn't on my list, and I'm sure you have a couple as well that popped up, is Vampire Survivors, because I just played it on a whim, recalling yet again it was one of the many games you recommended in the podcast last year, which I didn't bother to play. Um, really good. It's just like a little, I was looking for a little, you can just jump straight into a game uh, for 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Uh, you can go much longer, of course, if you survive, but it's uh, pretty much entirely based on how long your run goes for. Very play the same thing over and over, but you get better and you learn things, and it's it's just quite addictive. It's got that little hook of you realize you can do better, or you find a new little secret, or you unlock something and it changes everything, or you realize a different combination of power ups that you choose work way better than other ones. Uh, yeah, great game, and it's yet another Game Pass game, so worth checking out. And good yeah. on mobile too. Like I played it through. I know it's got a free mobile app. You could just play that. That's probably the better option. I played. Uh, through the Game Pass app because I wanted to continue my progress. You and want the achievements works. too. You just don't say it as, as uh, adamantly as I do. <laughs> and I want the achievements, but mainly because I don't want to unlock everything again because I don't really know how I unlock these things. They're just kind of unlocked. Um, so, it, yeah, it works pretty well with touch controls. If you just want to play on mobile, I'll get the dedicated app because you can actually play in either mode. You can pick to play kind of portrait or landscape. So depending on how you want it works equally fine both ways. So. Uh, yeah, good phone game as well. Nice, that's really good. Yeah, it's, I'm at the point in Vampire Survivors though where it's like every game is like a half an hour mm, at too. least. Oh, like the, if you want to do the things you want to do, it's like a half an hour each. So it's good and bad in that way. But it's like it's a super engaging and really fun. So if you haven't tried it, there's no reason not to. Hmm. And yeah, Anything else? I, that's all I played was The Witcher basically and some Dead Space, but we'll get to that. We'll get to that later. Yeah, we'll and I got to it last week, too. We can get to that now. Okay. <laughs> what is there to say about Dead Space that I haven't already said before? Uh, it's out now, I guess, is what I didn't say before. It's it's a remake of the 2008 classic, uh, which in itself I would say was heavily inspired by Resident Evil 4, um, but with a very different mechanic, whereas in the likes of Resident Evil, you're playing a survival horror game and trying to evade zombies in Dead Space, uh, the objective is slightly different. There are bad things that bump in the night and go bump in the night and, and try to get you, but you kill them not by headshots, but through dismemberment. So playing as Isaac Clark, uh, you're an engineer uh, on the USG Ishimura on an uh, attempt to not only rescue the people of that uh, craft because something's gone wrong, you're also looking for your girlfriend. Uh, and an engineer by trade, you, you know, take... Weapons that are not conventional weapons, you take kind of like engineering tools and repurpose them to uh, to aid you in said dismemberment of, of the bad guys who are necromorphs. I really, really like it. I don't know. Did we talk about if you've played the, the 2008 original, Ben? I can't remember. Yeah, I'm just remembering that we did discuss this half last week. Uh, yes, and I think your advice was pretty much if you like Dead Space, it's definitely worth replaying. If you're on the fence and unsure, you could play the original. It's not a drastic change. It's not a Final Fantasy VII level total remake. It's more of a... But it's it's still a quality remake. That was, yeah. That's about what you said, yeah. The problem... With, like, it, like it's, it's modern enough because it was a 360 game that it, it's not needing to reinvent the wheel. The, the likes of the Final Fantasy 7s and the Resident Evil 2 and 3s of the world is that they were a completely different like appearance, format, etc. And they really did need a bit of a glow up. Whereas this is maybe a game that people haven't played just because they missed it, you know, because it's hmm. get, it's getting old. It's getting... I'm, we're all getting old. Um, gameplay looks amazing is amazing and it's that weird thing of like it looks exactly like you pictured it in your head at the time but if you go back and look at the 2008 game like it's it's it, it got a huge facelift it's just, you just you wouldn't ever think about it um and it's that thing of do you want to pay the 10 15 dollars and just deal with like 2008 graphics and like frames and stuff or do you want to pay the 110 dollar 
or lower, depending on where you get it from, like asking price for a silky smooth, modern, visually outstanding game that has many of the same mechanics. And I would say it's easier to justify the purchase of Dead Space from 2008 now to 2023 as compared to like, and we've, I've harped on this way too many times, the, you know, like the last of us three times in 10 years type scenario. Um, though if you like it and you're happy to do it, no problems there. Like you, you are in control of your own wallet. Mm, well, I'm actually very tempted to buy the last of us one remastered, mastered again, whatever it's called because of the TV show, but that's a, that's another topic. So I think that's probably why they did that. I'll loan you okay. my disc. You can actually just have the disc if you want. Uh, I, I don't, you know, <laughs> I don't really have time to play it right now, but I'm, it's the liking the idea of playing a game again that you've already played, but you don't actually ever do it. I think that's the situation. I played that game twice already. I don't really need to do it again. I'll just watch the show. Um, back on Dead Space, I mm. suppose you, the main thing is, so Resident Evil 2, I think we would agree, is the bar for remakes of this type of game, certainly survival horror games. Where does this compare as a remake, but then also just comparing them directly. If you forget their remakes and you just played Resident Evil 2 and Dead Space, the new version, how do they compare? Well there there is stuff that's different, but it's not as it's not as noticeable a difference between like the RE2 and the new RE2 and and, and the old Dead Space and the new Dead Space. Um Isaac Clark speaks throughout, so they got the the same voice actor who did two and three to come back and actually provide a personality to, to the Isaac of Dead Space 1. Um, they've added some side quests that kind of flesh out the world. And it's it's not the the Final Fantasy VII thing of like kind of tweaking or like, you know, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, like sort of changing things, but we're all aware of it. Um, it more just adds to what was already there. Um, there's a, a secret ending, an alternate ending um, that just feeds into yeah. Dead Space 2. Mm-hmm. And I'd be surprised if they didn't remake Dead Space 2 now. Uh, Dead Space 3... Dead Space 2 is arguably the best in the in the franchise, depending on who you ask. I'm, I'm a huge fan of 1, because it's kind of like... It's like the Alien to Aliens thing, if we're talking about movies. Like, they're very, very good, each in their own right, for very different reasons. Um, whereas I don't think anybody is going to argue that Dead Space 3 is a contender for, like, the title of best in the franchise. Um, the way that they've ended or potentially ended this first game really feeds into Dead Space 2. I'm almost hoping that if they do decide to remake Dead Space 2, that's where they kind of do a bit of a divergent uh, ending or like plot and kind of just steer clear of the old Dead Space 3 and like maybe just chart a new course for the franchise entirely. That'd be a big call in a way because I suppose because it's a totally different studio making this game, uh, and I know like Glenn Schofield, who was the original uh, co-director, I think, on Dead Space, uh, tweeted, and he also just made Callisto Protocol. He tweeted that he kind of liked how respectful this remake is of a team that he worked in ages ago, and they really liked that. Uh, would be a bit cool to then at some point totally change the original game, but potentially the right one. If it's if that's there's no point just remaking shot for shot essentially gameplay for gameplay if there are improvements that could be made and things didn't quite work out as well as they potentially could have. So it would be a big call. I'm not sure if EA, as the big boss publisher, would be gutsy enough to make too many changes. Yeah, I don't know. The, the weird thing about Dead Space 3 is it kind of had that weird like Resident Evil 5 co-op angle, and it's really hard to be scared or as scared in like a dark, scary environment if you've just got your like either AI friend with you or... A- yeah real friend in your ear controlling the second character so um it wasn't a bad game i don't mind it but it was a bit of a misstep and i i really like the the spooky claustrophobic dark and like i guess really in the first in the 2008 game like the unknown enus of dead space which obviously i didn't feel playing this new one because it was too similar to to be out of you know what i knew um but it's still, it was very effective and it was very enjoyable and it was like a really good use of, I think I've probably spent like a week and a half, two weeks just kind of getting through all the little secrets and playing through it. So um, if you are a survival horror fan, it's a no brainer. It's it's far better than the Callisto Protocol, um, which tried to do some things and did most of them kind of horribly, to be honest. So um, there's a reason why you're not, you know, squaring up and having a boxing match with the Necromorphs mm. because it's not as compelling, I would argue. 
Not the way to go. <laughs> uh, yes. And then, so I suppose the, the start of this year has been Dead Space, and then it's been a surprise hit from a studio that we would expect to make a survival horror game uh, in Tango, and they've gone and made something totally different. We did another game we spoke about a little bit last week, but I don't think either of us have played it much, so we're talking Hi-Fi Rush. Have you finished it? I've now. finished it now. Haven't finished it. Uh, no time. I've so many other games to play, but I've I've dabbled through it. Really good, but a game that I can tell immediately I'm bad at. So Sunset <laughs> Overdrive all over again. It's it's very much a rhythm-based game. You need to have your combat basically on point. It's got a bit of Dynasty Warriors about it in that sense of like it's just so much kind of like XXX, light attack, light attack, heavy attack. Um, really cool though. Like I can see why people would love it. I think I will get through it. It's probably only like, what would you say, seven, eight hours. It doesn't seem like it's going to be super long. Yeah, it's about that. I think it's like 12 or so missions off the top of my head. I can't quite remember. Um, do you have the ability to block yet? Yes. I okay. Think so. Well, my pro tip that I kind of got into the habit of doing, I, d- I didn't turn on any of the assisted, like, apart from the cat giving you, like, the little glow yeah. to the beat. I didn't turn on any other assists, but I did infinitely better and had way more fun just by, like, keeping the beat with the block. And then, like, it was almost like I was playing Guitar Hero and then, like, deciding to be like a jazz musician and improvise to like, I had my beat. I had my continual like B, 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 X, X, I, X, Y, B, B, X, X, Y. And like, I don't know if that helps you in your brain or how I'm trying to explain it, but like, it's, I was playing the game probably for the first quarter. And then for the remaining game, I was actually pretending like I was in a jam session or something. And it was like infinite, infinitely more enjoyable. I did better. And it was just like, an utter delight as well mm. the entire time. Whereas like, I, I think I was trying to play it more like a fighting game or an action game where I should have just stuck to the rhythm. I don't know if that makes sense or not, what I'm trying to get at, but I loved it. Yeah. I thought it was so good. Uh, I, I love the characters. I love how the story goes. I love just how it doesn't take itself seriously. And the, the, like the visual style is probably just like the most jaw dropping aspect of it it's just it's absolutely yeah, it's beautiful great. transitions in and out of cutscenes, and it's like a really neat way um like a, a completely unique look um and i would happily jump back into this franchise and see what they're doing it's i i, I can't commend it enough mm, i think that will definitely happen and yeah i would agree i would say the first maybe even half an hour or so i was just trying to play it as a general mash attack pretty much how to play any kind of brawling game just get as many attacks in as I can quickly. And that's not the way to success here. You need to be on the beat. Everything you do, uh, the little cat, when I kind of got used to that and playing to that, and I do use that as my life, just make sure that I'm on rhythm. Um, even though there's heaps of kind of tells around, like even your main character's foot is always basically tapping to the beat. There's, yeah. It's hard to be off it. Like you are pretty much on it. It's just, it's kind of repressing that normal urge of a, a button mashing fighter to, to not button mash, to play on the beat, and there are some attacks where you need to skip a beat. They're like, you need to just plan. You kind of get used to that. You need to just kind of know. And that's probably what you're saying when you've got your block on the beat and then you're kind of improvising beyond that is your attacks. That would probably make sense. Maybe they should have sold it like that. That would be a good training mode. Well, maybe. And then, like, there is that training mode as well, which there are so many combos. It's in, it's insane how many combos there are from basically, like, two attack buttons, a mm. block and, like, a an assist character call in assist button and then like air combos and stuff as well it's it, and like to what you were saying every everything is on the beat the characters run to the beat they jump to the beat yeah. you can do, like dodge to the beat and if you dodge three times it's like it adds this little like kind of like hi-hat to the to the song that's playing in the background it's it's, it's all very enjoyable it's super cool it's yeah. like a, it's like i'm surprised this isn't from harmonics or something to be honest but now harmonics is part of epic games and they're probably churning out Fortnite content cool. instead of something yeah, similar to this. But also cool to see a studio that doesn't make anything anything like this. It's not what they're known for. And they've made something basically the total opposite of their slow, moody, dark survival horror. They've made something super quick and fun and vibrant and very colorful and musical. Uh, it's like the total opposite. And we, we don't see that very often at all from developers. So oh. great that they've had the chance. Uh, and then great that they were given the opportunity to just shadow drop it. Again, something that we've been predicting for a while, um, but it hasn't really happened. And I think now that we've had a couple of weeks to digest it, 
great move. I'm sure oh. there were heaps of meetings within Microsoft about how risky it is not to have a marketing push behind it. Uh, that games kind of come into, I would suspect games come into Game Pass and they get a little tweet and they have a little spike, but then they just kind of tr- like drop away at that point. But this has kind of stayed around. Like people are still chatting about it a few weeks later. I imagine if you go on the console, the PC app now, it's probably at the top of the charts for Game Pass or popular, whatever they rate it as. Yeah. Uh, and I think it's probably done better. Like if being this type of game, a bit quirky, uh, a budget release, so it's not on disc, people don't like that from first parties especially Microsoft when they haven't, and fair criticism, they haven't had a proper AAA game since December 2021 uh, for them to come out kind of as this is their next game. I think they would have got some criticism. People would have been a bit disappointed that that's their next game. Uh, But like Pentiment, it's great. Like I'm glad they released these. uh, And I I think it's a good format. Do you think uh, Microsoft should continue to release some games like this and should Sony and Nintendo consider shadow dropping games as well? Yeah, absolutely, because it's, and like, the good thing about this is that it was a good game, and it's not like they were relying upon the the FOMO of not being able to play it because it's out, and you've just heard about Mm. it, um, to like, you know, get some cheeky early sales before people said, oh no, it's horrible, like, this is, this is a quality game that you want to tell your friends about. So in addition to that kind of like FOMO feeling of like, oh, it's out now, you you can be playing this. Why aren't you playing this? Like you will go to your friends and say, oh, it's really good to the point where it's doing really well on Game Pass, but it's also doing really well on like Steam paid charts for Mm. people who don't want to go and buy it. So it works in our favor. It works to, you know, Game Pass subscribers favors and it works to Microsoft's favor in terms of their bottom line. So, and, and they didn't have to spend a single cent on marketing. So like, they've saved money somehow doing this in addition to raking it in. Not that this should happen for every single game, but like it's no. it's nice and refreshing. Certainly I think some beer games need that kind of big long push uh, when the new IP is maybe to kind of help us understand what it is and also just to build that excitement. Like it's exciting to know that we're getting a new Zelda this year, that we're finally getting Starfield this year. Uh, but both of those games were delayed. So yeah. by going with the Shadow Drop, it takes away that opportunity. We had no idea what's was coming. It, there was no chance for disappointment. It just released. Like, it's the total opposite of what's been happening the last two years, really. And yeah. I think that's a pretty key point. Well, and Halo Infinite obviously was delayed as well. But, like, we had heard so mm. much continually about Halo Infinite. And it did not perform to what the marketing hype wanted you to think was going to happen. So that's obviously a detriment. So let's find a happy medium in these huge pushes to, like, be realistic huge pushes, perhaps. And we'd mm. all feel better. And we'd all feel less jaded when things don't quite go to plan. Uh, speaking of things that don't quite go to plan, we finally have our usual segment. It's back for 2023. Star Wars Jedi Survivor had not quite gone to plan, but only just it's been delayed by six weeks, pushed out now to the 28th of April. I think it was delayed previously. I can't remember into this slot to begin with, or maybe it just didn't have a release date. Uh, maybe I'm just assuming it was delayed. I can't remember. It was just, again, not a fact-based show. Maybe It was delayed 17 show. times. Definitely has been delayed now, but the smallest of delays, like a six-week delay, they're saying the game's finished, it just needs a little bit more polishing. There's not a great deal that you can do in six weeks. Those devs are going to be crunching hardcore. There's no way around that. That's Otherwise, they would have delayed it longer. Um, I'm all for it if it's getting it kind of right, but obviously we would prefer that devs don't go through that crunch time. Maybe they're not. Maybe it needs two weeks of polishing in the old way and they've decided let's give them six weeks to do that little bit. Probably not, but we could be hopeful. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's it's better to release a you know a delayed game is a good game. A poorly released game is often hard to fix, and you kind of drop off. So if it's if true, it, it must be some pretty considerably uh, noticeable things. Maybe it's some performance issues, something like that that people would just see immediately. Maybe they saw like the reaction to Pokemon and kind of thought, let's our game's kind of like that. Let's fix it now. I don't know. If, I think you need more than six weeks for Pokemon. But anyway, that's true. You need some more power to sort that out. Uh, but, I mean, I think there has been a reliance, especially over the last few years. Like, look at Cyberpunk as the key example of kind of having a game that's in a playable state and they just decide, we'll fix it in post. And that and took a year, really. Yeah. So, like, that's that's not six weeks either. Nor six months. Yeah. So it can't have been a huge deal. I mean, maybe it was even something, maybe they used that as an excuse. It was actually something was just, maybe there was a weird bug or something they just needed time to fix or 
something licensing related to do with the Star Wars universe, which they need to get permission for, and they need to change, something like that. Yeah. Um, but it does put it into the danger zone for me because it's like two weeks out from Zelda. What are the chances I'm finishing this pretty big? Uh, like the last one was a pretty big game. Uh, and by the time Tears of the Kingdom comes out, whatever I'm playing is getting shelved. Uh, and it's because it's kind of that Soulsy style game, the the, uh, the Star Wars Jedi series. It's not a game you can really pick up, play sixty percent, put it down for three months, then come back and just resume. Like it's that'll be very tough. So that's I will. My disappointment. I will be playing it. Um, and the really jaded person in me, like, and I I don't know. I'm not smart enough to know when the end of the fiscal year is. But this feels like it's kind of around that time. So like the jaded person in me is worried that this is delayed. Just as long as it can be delayed for it to come out mm. during whatever EA needs it to come out in so they sell all the copies regardless of whether or not it's finished. And I hope that's not the case. I hope it's really a case yeah, of we needed six weeks, we're going to take six weeks. Um, but I guess time will soon tell. Presumably also means there's going to be a mega day one patch, which there always is, it always is anyway, because uh, games only go gold, so they get printed probably at least six weeks out. So whatever adding that much time frame probably doesn't change what's actually on the disc or it doesn't change it very much so all that work they're doing they're probably doing it right up until the 27th of april and they're delivering that like on day one which is kind of common now but i think this is going to be a big one so uh if you're uh, if you're buying things on disc because you like to reduce your download limit maybe this is not the game for that well and if you're buying this because you think it's going to be great and you're a bit hesitant if you delay I guess the only thing you're losing out on is the ability to play it immediately. And you'll probably get it at a cheaper rate if you wait a week or two. Or two or three months, depending on how it goes, if it's, you know, a buggy mess. It's 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 all about how much patience you can muster, I suppose. And if you can't muster any patience, I mm. guess be aware that we've tried to be uh, warning you that you should be cautious. So... Fine. Not that like Ooh. you think not that it's good to just be like, oh well the game's not done, it's half baked, it's out, but that's on you. Like that's really on the publishers and developers to do a better job. Yeah. But it's it is it's not a red flag, but it's a orangish going red flag that they've had a like it's a weird <laughs> delay. A six week delay is a weird delay. It's it's not telling us a lot. When something's pushed out six, twelve months, we know it's just it's not in the state to launch. Six weeks kind of feels like not enough time to do that much to it but it's it's enough it's the fact that it's happened means that it wasn't ready so reading to that what you will i can't actually recall i kind of feel like jedi order was one of the first game or fallen order i should say was one of the first ea access play whatever it's called i always forget uh games that didn't get that 10 hour trial because they were kind of like well you might actually be able to finish most of the game in that so we're just not going to do it yeah it's kind of shitty because that's kind of one of their main things so did they do it for dead space I don't know. I can't. That's really I bad. I, I don't know. I don't know. I, yeah, I kind of feel like they just, they've kind of gone quiet on that. It's kind of like every time FIFA comes out there, play your trial this year. Every other game, it's kind of like, oh, the trial thing. Yeah, we used to do that. We do it sometimes still, but we don't do it for every game anymore. Well, I'll try to get to the bottom of uh, the situation and, and we'll let people know. And we'll probably talk about it if, if I, I can figure it out, of course. So there you go. Uh mm -hmm. Good show is a short show, or a short show is a good show, or whatever else. Anything you want to say before we uh, sign off so, for this week? Yeah, let's let's just sign up. Let's just wrap up here. That's a good point. It's uh, good to be back this year. Next week we have a pretty big game to talk about in Hogwarts Legacy. So uh, by the time we, re well, at least by the time we release that episode, you, the listener, will have a good chance to have played that game because it's kind of out now. It's kind of not. It's one of those if you paid more money, you got it early. So I consider it to have been released, but it's. Technically not. Um, <laughs> but yeah, have a play. It's a big game. It's going to be spoiler free. If you like, you can read our review on that right now. Um, but yeah, thanks for joining me, Steve, and we'll see you guys next week.